start um, just some thoughts about uh, a rapidly changing area of our thinking about streets and traffic and the public spaces in which streets form such an important part. And I hope that this may be a useful way to pick up on some of the themes about the importance of transport and movement as the regeneration and the revival of the resilience of the city comes through. I wanted to start with an image which many of you, if you are fans of YouTube, which I may have seen from another great resilient city in San Francisco, one of the earliest films that we have of a, of a street. And I, I love it because it illustrates so much the remarkable complexity of life uh, that the, the streets can, uh, can uh, exhibit. And it's a, it's a scene, this was a, a film taken on the front of a, a, a tram moving down Market Street in San Francisco. It happens this two days before the earthquake and, and great fire that destroyed much of the city. But the way in which the interaction of different uh, users in different space, I think, uh, seems to suggest to us that in a way, much of what we learn about the street is in fact to understand the brilliant <laughs> Now, the streets, of course, have had a, a bad time in the past few years. We've tended to rely on a lot of individual measures, uh, often very expensive and um, difficult to maintain, uh, but creating often spaces which are not particularly representative of the sort of quality of public space that most of us want, and indeed, as, uh, as was illustrated earlier, some, some sort of aspects of, um, of streets that aren't necessarily the sort of places that we want to be. Whereas, at the same time, we see examples all over Europe and indeed increasingly uh, in the UK of, of uh, examples of different relationship between traffic and movement. Uh, many of you will be aware, of course, of the transformation <coughs> at a very different level at the centre of, uh, of Kensington, West London, in the, in the cultural quarter of London of Exhibition Road, a transformation of the street from really very dull, inappropriate to dual carriageway in the heart of the cultural quarter of London, somewhere which really didn't unite together the uh, qualities of that part of the world somewhere which has been worked on now for uh, the last 10 years to produce a coherent linear piece of public space which is now open and in use, a very different model for a street, but one which we hope begins to express uh, different uh, expectations and uh, behavioural standards of that, of, of that particular context. Of course streets are really important in terms of what they express about our culture and aspirations for my sort of work, you don't have to go very far from the main railway station to be puzzled by all sorts of messages that the cities give out about <laughs> whatever. And I suspect that, that, that uh, Derry London Derry has the same, uh, say often the same confusion about uh, uh, the way that the peace bridge is magnificent, but where it's land on the other side expresses some very different values. Of course, streets are very complicated, they've always had to serve all sorts of different functions, principally those of, on the one hand, movement, and on the other, uh, exchange and interaction and, and, and life and, and many streets over the years have had to cope with this. Uh, as of course I'm sure you know for many years uh, road uh, management and road design work on the principle of segregation, segregation of traffic from other activities of life that become a report of for which these illustrations come from 1963. In terms of sort of approach to what we think of as safety and movement, this poster from 1982 is really what got me interested in this subject notion of boundaries and barriers that uh, transgressing them was pretty dangerous, particularly dangerous in the of this poster, but, but, but largely separated environment where our streets really weren't part of the place that they serve. Now of course this is changing, I'm sure you're aware, the publication of Man of the Streets in the England and Wales has begun to recognise the place context of streets in a much stronger way and the other publications have gone with it for, for um, uh, the use of shared space and so on and give us more confidence in this area. And this is not just for major cities, but also applies to the villages, uh, of which uh, be, um, are important in, in the current uh, broader economy of Northern Ireland, how to ensure that traffic movement doesn't destroy the coherence and resilience of, of smaller communities in the way that a lot of uh, communities in, in, uh, in the UK likewise tackling how to deal with place, simple approaches to placemaking uh, to, to, to protect this, this process. Now, um, 
what's I think important, just, I, I know it's, it's my one slide where there's a bit of text on it, but the difference is, it seems to me, when we're looking at places, whether it's Harbour Square or, or other important parts of the city, is to distinguish between the importance of requiring highways, we still need a uh, single purpose major roads, which are tend to be very highly regulated, and personal, standardized, consistent, and predictable, with the aspects of what is public space, which can still accommodate movement, but which is opposite in every respect, in terms of cultural refinement, it can be unpredictable, it has to be multi-purpose, uh, and, and, uh, and relies on different language of communication. And so many of our worst urban spaces are where that confusion is writ large, and whether it's on the edges of, of city centers, or indeed public square, that's clear. The sort of conversations that are going on around the country tend to use now the subject of what design speed we work to in cities, where place making and issues such as um, um, uh, design and use of traffic signals or not, the design of markings, uh, the use of markings and crossings, and uh, issues like edge friction and so on to create low speed uh, design. It also, of course, brings on a completely different approach to the value of risk and the notions of what safety means, whether has, why hazards can be important for our safety, and many of you know that with Professor John Adams and, and so forth. Um, but but uh, of, of that we will we'll, we'll move on for the moment, because I think that understanding why and how this might represent a different approach to our streets requires looking at just a few successful examples from around the world. In the remaining time, there's, there's examples like terrific renovation of uh, Hennef near Bond, uh, along High Street, accommodates large numbers of movement. And I think more remarkably, particularly and relevant for, uh, the, for the foil side and so forth, the um, sort of sound from memories distracting. But um, this is uh, a, um, a street into the centre of Bern in Switzerland, uh, a, a major arterial road carrying street carrying 22,000 vehicles a day but has created this continuous movement, low-speed environment, taking out all the signals and simplifying all the junctions, taking out all the crossings. And it's just worth observing how the relationship between large volume traffic movement and pedestrian flow can, can happen in ways that would be, very, again, very difficult to predict. Again, the analogy of the ice rink, I think, is a useful one. Because uh, it, it's, it, what, is, what this has achieved is both um, efficiency of movement, but also tremendous economic uh, benefits of connectivity across this uh, building radial route. And uh, there isn't time to see more of this particular clip, but it's, 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 it's fun to watch. Of course, it also replicates the sort of uh, changes which have been experimented with busy junctions, the work of the late Hans Mondemann in transforming the Leweikai in, 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 uh, in, in Drachten, a junction handling about 22,000 vehicles a day again. Uh, but through low speed, no signals, uh, but, but also lots of human activity, human presence, encouraging children to play as close to the traffic as possible in order to bring the speeds down, in order to achieve the efficiency of movement that people can, can, can cope with at those speeds. And those sort of things are happening with signals coming out all over the, uh, not only in, 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 uh, in England and Wales, but in other places, and achieving a sort of different relationship between low speed movement and place which again would be difficult to model theoretically in an engineering school, but which uh, quite a rare analogy of the ice cream I think could be useful. Uh, across a number of examples, uh, Port is here in, 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 uh, in Bristol and, and many other places, experiments are now happening in removing or bagging over signals to, to get better pedestrian connectivity as well as flows. Um, a major scheme in Cheshire, at the town of Poynton, a town, a small town, divided by a really busy north-south route has last month removed the signals that divided this uh, town in two and is finding that it can cope with what was otherwise a very bleak and, and a very divisive uh, place into a real centre of, the, of this particular town again, just through the reliance on low speed continuous movement but not, not regulated by traffic. And this approach is happening in all sorts of examples around uh, Europe and indeed in the UK. I, I, I won't go into many, but one I wanted to touch on was particularly the remarkable transformation of the uh, Bahnhofplatz, uh, the, the railway station place in, in Aachen, the, the, uh, the railway station from the right to the town centre, across a fairly busy six-lane uh, inner route, but simply using a very simple approach to placemaking to make it very clear to both drivers using the 
route, as well as people arriving from the railway station, the route into the city centre and so forth. And this approach to place making is helping to introduce a new language for streets for many places, uh, examples like uh, no shopping in Sweden, a formerly signal controlled junction, very bleak, into a very strong sense of place which still copes with the uh, movement of buses and traffic that uh, the square has to also serve. And of course, finally, in, in, in Places like New Road in, in Brighton, the transformation from a fairly bleak and, and, and uh, economically declining street into somewhere that copes with all sorts of different variations of activity and movement, uh, taxis, buses, a couple of theatres there that, that move along the street, in ways that for all, everywhere is different, of course, but it begins to widen the palette of options for cities uh, such as this one uh, to, to uh, rethink uh, what messages its streets give and how it copes with the need for both movement and, and exchange and interaction. And, and, and finally, I, there's a, a many other examples of cities which are beginning to introduce the idea of, of placemaking as a, in simple measures. But I wanted to just very briefly touch on uh, Ashford because it's important the, 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 the ability to overcome some of the really busier ring roads. Ashford, for those of you who don't know, is ring by a uh, an extremely busy three-lane, one-way racetrack, uh, and has been transformed into a two-way, low-speed uh, boulevard, which copes with the 10,000 or so vehicles, but a strong emphasis on placemaking at every junction, not reliant on highway geometry, but relying instead on the ability for uh, all sorts of different circumstances to influence the interaction between people. But opening up uh, the town of Ashford, in its approaches, uh, overcoming some of the barriers and, and uh, guardrails and so forth, all gone, traffic signals all gone, and a very different sort of relationship created. I, I, I was very pleased when the Ashford scheme opened that some acolyte of banks who uh, produced this on one of the walls, which uh, seemed to me to, uh, to, to sum up um, the, 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 the change. But it's important, of course, in the, in the way that we look at the future of some of the residual. Um, uh, unresolved spaces like Harbour Square and so on, what that might become, we might look at that later, how we make sure that pedestrian connections in the city uh, work well. But most importantly, how we use some of the new language of low speed integrating uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, single purpose spaces into places which can respond to the sort of values that this city seeks to promote. And I, I find an example of still seven dials in, in, uh, in the centre of London, a remarkable example of how this is possible to somehow create the context where all sorts of movement and activity can coexist, even with busy uh, move, uh, uh, vehicle move, movement and so on, in ways that would again be very possible to imagine in a theoretical engineer's model, but which no, nevertheless is achieved in this particular junction both one of the safest and one of the most efficient um, junctions in this part of, uh, of the busy, uh, busy London. But to me, most importantly, because what it illustrates is an approach to civility, of being able to respond to the individual circumstances that life throws up. And many of you remember faulty towers? Do you remember the major? I think you sort of lied to a And occasionally he has senior moments and he comes out of the hall of and can't quite remember where he is or what he came out for. <laughs> because there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's something about that space which has created the context that allows for all sorts of circumstances to be to respond to. And I think it's a different uh, approach and language. So I'll, I'll leave you there with that. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, a new generation of streets for the city.